Hi, good afternoon. This is Meredith Lego, and my YouTube channel is all on Ascension Science on the, and the Expansion of Consciousness. And today I'm going to be talking about uh, basically how it is that we can start to better see or explore parallel or often what's we're called, uh, called past lives. So basically how, how it is that we do that. And uh, in terms of how I'm kind of bringing this information forward, I've been able to uh, basically connect with different consciousness. In this particular case, it's a collective consciousness. And um, I'm kind of asked questions through a Q and A type fashion. So basically getting to it, um, after I was meditating, essentially when I'm kind of in the right uh, uh, brain frequency to do this, I basically asked um, this group, what's the best method to see parallel lives and why is it important? The answer I got is uh, life is riddled with truths that often are masked in the knowingness of the full meaning for the beholder and experiencer. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily answer the question right away, but I think what they're saying is that, um, you know, there's a lot of things that when you're going through different day-to-day -day scenarios in life and some challenges that pop up in life, oftentimes they're masked, basically. Like there's a reason you're going through that experience um, and they're masked with the knowingness of the full meaning. Uh, and oftentimes as the experiencer, you may not understand the true meaning until much later on in life. And oftentimes what I've learned um, is that sometimes you really understand the meaning even after life um, when your consciousness moves on. But uh, I can tell you, you know, oftentimes you grow up and you reflect on something and you say, gee, that was a tough experience, but there was great meaning behind going through that. There was a great lesson that I went through that gave me a much richer understanding about interacting with the world and with other beings. And so they started off with that statement. They go on to say that parallel lives are one of these truths. We, consciousness, live multiple experiences to grow, learn, teach, to expand. When the pendulum swings, contraction of consciousness can occur. But over time, a heaping crest of water does move onto the shore and brings way for the upstep and the new dawn. There exists many paths to remember parallel lives. Multidimensional consciousness takes many forms and the recognition it is possible in the first, is the first step to expressing or experiencing um, and, and kind of moving on. So to expressing the experience. So let me read that again. Multidimensional consciousness takes many forms and the recognition it is possible is the first step to expressing the experience. So what they're saying is, you know, first you have to even acknowledge the fact that it's possible because when you're open to that possibility, you are basically opening your mind to the recognition and the um, willingness of this information to start to basically come to your field of awareness. Memories of other consciousness experiences seed within your cells, within your DNA. For all experience of the whole is found within. You are a holographic representation of the whole. Within your core, your zero point, and within the quantum particles in your energy body, is a way to tap into the black hole, white hole of both unlimited energy and all space, time, and time space. When you remember that you are all that is, there is no separation from you and all. You simply tune into the consciousness of any consciousness fractal. So pausing right there, um, they reference they basically reference the idea that you're you're one with all, and I think I've done many lessons on that uh, that that uh, basic concept from the different groups that I've been able to connect with. But here um, they're referencing the fact that we essentially have a zero point, 
Um, and many of the quantum particles within our energy body and physical body, I have to imagine because they reference DNA, also has that zero point, which basically, um, you know, they're, they're, they're saying that through that zero point, um, which is kind of neutral frequency between electrical and magnetic frequency, you have the ability to basically tap in between a black hole and a white hole. And both provide um, access to unlimited energy uh, as well as access to different space, time, and time space points. Um, and this actually um, goes back to some initial learnings that I got from an ascended master. And I'll try and post the link to some of those initial videos in which he talks through a construct of um, really unlimited uh, unlimited time. So he talked about it as the um, infinity or the path to infinity. And it was actually how energy, electromagnetic energy, basically kind of maneuvers around our field or our, our physical body, if you will. Um, but in the center of that uh, kind of torus field of energy is, is the zero point. And within the human body, it's, you know, around the heart area, I guess you could say. Um, but that, that's essentially what they're referencing. So when you're able to start, uh, essentially realizing that you're what, that you're one with all, and if you can kind of tune in and almost like focus your consciousness on that zero point, you, you begin to connect more with all that is, and therefore can kind of maneuver your consciousness to any point within itself, because it's, it, you know, we're all one. Uh, they go on to say that for humans, at this time, dream time can be a method to witness or observe parallel lives. What might be perceived as a dream is actually a fractal consciousness piece of your higher self from an actual experience in another space time vector. Um, so, so they kind of go on to reference one example of a specific way to experience or see parallel lives. Now, in, in terms of the actual um, I guess, session that I had with, with uh, kind, of, kind of connecting into this energy. It ended right there uh, because I, I had to actually go off and do something, I think, uh, make dinner or something like that. But I did want to make a note that um, after the fact, I was coming back and looking at this and I was just getting lots of, you know, different ways, essentially, that that you have the ability to essentially remember or experience past lives. So a second way um, is meditation um, or hypnosis itself. So when I say that, it's anything that's going to put your uh, your brainwave and your consciousness into more of the right frequency. So I think it's either delta, delta or theta. I can't remember the exact one, but it's essentially at the right frequency where your brain isn't active. Um, you, you know, you don't have like the conscious brain going. Um, you're really tuning into um, sort of the subconscious layers, if you will. So it's at that point um, that you actually can start to uh, direct your energy towards um, like have an intention uh, before and somewhat program your consciousness in order to uh, kind of see stuff that has been programmed within your cells. So everything that consciousness sees and experience essentially is recorded, if you will. And it's a matter of programming your subconscious in order to kind of hit the play button, you know, rewind it or hit the play button on some of those recordings. Um, so that's essentially what you're doing. Now, you can do this yourself. Um, and and oftentimes you literally the best time to pro kind of program to see that is just on the verge of um, like hitting that state where you're not really thinking about it. You're not asleep. Um, that's a good time. But if you're really, really tired, if your body's tired, you might fall asleep. So it's usually best to do this when your your physical body's not completely exhausted so that you can maintain some level of lucidity as this is going on. Um, another, another, so, so that, that's, uh, you know, the second way other than dream time. Another way that it can happen would be through like downloaded flashbacks. So, um, you know, sometimes it can happen or it happens to me like, uh, probably not the best scenario, but let's say you're on a long drive and you're not really thinking about anything. You're not like actively thinking. Again, your brainwave is in a certain state, um, but sometimes 
when you're like on a long drive or you're just sort of running or doing something without giving a lot of uh, mental focus, consciousness, thought, sometimes you can get flashes or images that come in. That's a that's another um, classic time that it can occur. Um, you certainly can experience it with the help uh, of others, like going through um, an Akashic reading or um, having like a healing session. So Reiki can be a classic way to um, maybe tune into past lives or sound tuning. So what, what's happening is essentially there's elements of um, um, energy work that's being done inside of your electromagnetic field. And during that energy work, there could be blocked energy that's essentially being released th throughout that, pro that process. Now, I'm not saying that everybody experiences it, but some people do have the ability to actually release energy and it can result in like releasing an emotion, sometimes crying, but sometimes um, images or visions or memories of what might have actually created that block can, can actually be witnessed um, by, you know, at, at that particular time as well. So that's another way to do it. Um, remote viewing can be another way to do it. And sometimes when you might have a deja vu, vu experience that, you know, that could be another kind of tune into uh, parallel life. And then as I've talked through in past videos, um, there's other ways to do it through, uh, and I mentioned kind of hypnosis up front. So in addition to possibly kind of doing it to yourself, you can actually leverage uh, trained past life regression specialists. Um, a, a classic technique is quantum um, hypnosis healing uh, therapy or QHHT. So that that is a, you know, a great form in order to uh, go through that experience as well with the help of another person. So um, why it's important to do this, there is a plentiful number of reasons why it's actually good to go through this experience. Probably the, the first and foremost one is actually to help with your own self-healing. Um, during that process, you might be witnessing uh, something that needs to be cleared, like uh, an energy block that needs to be cleared. Oftentimes, your higher self, which again is still just a fractal of source, is oftentimes going to show you something that you need to know or see in that moment for some level of expansion or growth. Um, that could be a healing moment, or it could be sort of a realization of why you elected to even kind of incarnate again at this particular type time. Um, so that's a huge reason. Um, and and I, that, was, that kind of ties to the second reason, which was moving on in lessons for consciousness growth. So the entire reason is they, is I kind of go back to what this collective consciousness group said at the beginning um, when I asked them this question is that, you know, the reason that we actually exist is really to grow, to learn, to teach, and really to expand. And, it, and this is really the best way or form to reduce entropy. Um, and so when you're going through these experiences, you're going to have the opportunity to continue to kind of grow or expand your understanding, your consciousness during that period of time. Um, another, another reason that I thought of would be to remember true timelines of the past um, and avoiding futures that are not in the best or highest good uh, for certainly your consciousness experience or perhaps for other beings. So um, many, many on our planet right now, for example, are having memories of, um, uh, let's say, Ad Atlantan, Atlantic cataclysms. So, so some of us are actually starting to have <laughs> memories of what's going to happen in the future. And um, that can help us. Uh, so, so going back to Atlanta, sorry, you know, some are having definitely memories of things that were kind of catastrophic to humanity that happened in the past. And I think that's happening um, with the eye towards healing. But I think the other benefit of that is essentially beginning to see um, some truths that happened about the past that haven't necessarily been taught, to, you know, most of us in school. So um, 
you know, let's say a lot, oftentimes the victors in war get to write their own history. Um, but the good thing is, is that if all consciousness is essentially recorded and uh, many humans are beginning to kind of wake up to that reality, we're starting to witness um, historical events that were sort of covered up. So that's great to our advantage because, you know, we can start to use this to better understand what's really going on in our world today. Um, but at the same time, as I mentioned before, there's other individuals um, who are beginning to remember some memories that have, are going to be happening in the future as one potential um, uh, possibility or probability. So often times in linear times, you know, the past is the past, the future is one potential probable possible um, timeline or outcome. And we have the ability to change that basically at will in any one moment. And so by how we sort of think and how we feel, that can change the frequency of essentially the timeline that we plop our consciousness onto. Um, so like, and I've, I've had some past videos on this. So certainly, you know, uh, you know, by seeing some potential, you know, future outcomes, you have the ability then to make a choice of what direction you really want to go down in the future. And I think, you know, there's many individuals now on the planet who are seeing possibilities for humanity in the future and starting to say, now, wait a minute, I don't think we want that. Um, so let's create a different outcome. So uh, that that certainly is a great reason to, you know, start to build this um, muscle, so to speak, in terms of our capability. Um, a fourth reason for doing this would be clearing your field. So I talked about actually healing triggers or traumas, but, but one of the, you know, something that happens when you do that is you actually clear energy blockages that exist in your physical, your emotional, your uh, mental and your etheric bodies. And so you essentially have, you know, energy goo, if you will, like uh, stagnant energy that actually can um, create physical harm in your body, diseases in your body. And so um, it's a great healing technique um, just to kind of, you know, clear out uh, energy blockages in your physical body that actually, um, if you kind of think about it, let's say you're de depressed or you're anxious um, just at work, you know, you're stressed. You know how there's many, many jobs that cause lots of people all across the world to be stressed day to day. Well, as, as you experience that level of anxiety or pressure in your life over every single day, you're, um, you know, you're feeling that. So that's an, that's an emotion and that's sort of a, a, a mental pattern that you're feeling. It creates sort of a type of energy frequency that you're emanating um, and it kind of sits in your electromagnetic field. Um, and that frequency of energy could be, let's say, usually in this particular case, would be vibrating at a lower frequency than the organs in your body. So that by itself is going to create uh, your organs to start to resonate at that lower frequency, which is not in their normal frequency range. And that's what can create some diseases. Another thing that can happen is that essentially the DNA inside of your body can start to uh, constrain or curl up and not be able to expand and release information codes quite as easily. So, you, so um, you know, you're, you're causing physical harm to your body. Um, by doing that, you're not able to feel the flow of energy moving through you. And um, that includes information codes that can be coming in through the field and through the sun. So when you start to block your um, physical, emotional, mental, and um, uh, etheric or energy bodies, essentially you also are blocking access to information codes that can be coming from the sun. Um, so that's another, you know, very important reason to do this. A fifth reason for why it's good to start to, um, you know, better understand uh, and clear sort of past lives is being able to connect with other fractals and other body parts. <clears throat> so um, essentially, uh, you know, consciousness or source consciousness sort of is one, but it's chosen to sort of fractalize into many different experiences. So essentially, um, imagine... Imagine like your body, 
you know, your body elected to fractalize apart. Well, essentially we're, we're working on trying to like reassemble the various body parts back together or consciousness pieces back together. <clears throat> um, another sixth reason is by doing this, you know, you might have experiences of seeing lives that um, are in completely different forms than what you're living today. So as an example, you know, I have seen lives in male bodies and female bodies, um, multiple races, um, human races. I have seen myself experiencing lives um, in non-human form. So <clears throat> when you see that, you begin to have a much richer perspective for life, for experiences. And, um, you know, it, it gives you, it gives you an understanding through a real world experience of what it means to walk in those shoes. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I think, and even I find myself to do doing this, it's so easy to kind of, uh, point fingers every day at everybody. And, um, you know, you know, when you, when you do that, it's so easy to feel separate and therefore to kind of blame others and, and not really understand what it means to be in their shoes. But when you start to have the memories of being in other lives and other situations and other races, um, you essentially realize now, wait a minute, I was in those shoes and this is how I felt, you know, um, and it helps you certainly have a new perspective. And by doing that, at least what it does for many, and it certainly did for me, it continues to do for me is, um, allows me to have a much richer sense of empathy and compassion <clears throat> for uh, many beings because, you know, essentially everybody is in a learning journey. Um, everybody has, chosen to experience exactly what they're experiencing, um, everybody. And, um, you know, our ego can't wrap our minds around the fact that, uh, no one would want to experience some situations that, you know, we witness individuals going through, but the reality is it, it was chosen. <laughs> and so, um, knowing that there was some lesson, there was some reason for it yet, we can still have compassion and empathy for those experiences and be sort of um, what, uh, you know, what some call a compassionate witness. So, you know, with that, that's another, again, great reason to explore um, remembering some parallel or past lives because it really tr truly will help you understand how connected we really all are. Um, yeah. And so that's, uh, that's basically what I wanted to share, I mean, not all of the information really came from a channeling just because of the constraint of time on that one particular session. However, I thought, I thought the information up front was good. And again, just wanted to pass on from my own experience, just other ways to um, start to explore seeing or witnessing um, past, uh, really, I call them parallel lives because they're really all running simultaneously in time. Um, as well as why it's important to start doing this really for your own benefit and your own healing. And when you heal yourself, you actually start to heal um, uh, the field, if you will, the field of energy. And it starts to have a resonant effects with um, other others around you. <clears throat> so I'd say that, you know, right now, there's a lot of great stuff going on in the world and there's a lot of not so great stuff going on in the world. <clears throat> but essentially, as we start to work on healing, we start to kind of tune into and heal some shadow parts <clears throat> that are very trapped inside of our collective field. And that's, <clears throat> sorry, that's a lot of what you see playing out today. There's a lot of shadow healing. So with that, I hope this information has certainly helped you and um, continue to help your understanding of consciousness and expansion and how you can continue forward on your own healing journey. And with that, I will see you in future videos. Thanks very much. Bye.